We bought an old house, my boyfriend and I. He's in charge of the new construction, converting the kitchen into the master bedroom, for instance, while I'm on wallpaper removal duty. The previous owner papered every wall and ceiling, removing it is brutal. But oddly satisfying, the best feeling is getting a long peel similar to your skin when you're peeling from a sunburn. I don't know about you, but I kind of make a game of peeling. On the hunt for the longest piece before it rips, under a corner section of paper, in every room is a person's name and a date. Curiosity got the best of me one night when I googled one of the names and discovered the person was actually a missing person. The missing date matching the date under the wallpaper the next day, I made a list of all the names and dates. Sure enough, each name was for a missing person with dates to match. We notified the police who naturally sent out the crime scene team. I overheard one tech say, Yep, it's human. Human? What's human? Ma'am? Where is the material you removed from the walls already? This isn't wallpaper you were removing. I hate it when my brother Charlie has to go away. My parents constantly try to explain to me how sick he is. That I am lucky for having a brain where all the chemicals flow properly to their destinations like undamed rivers. When I complain about how bored I am without a little brother to play with, they try to make me feel bad by pointing out that his boredom likely far surpasses mine. Considering his confined to a dark room in an institution, I always beg for them to give him one last chance. Of course, they did at first. Charlie has been back home several times, each shorter in duration than the last. Every time, without fail, it all starts again. The neighborhood cats with gouged out eyes showing up in his toy chest. My dad's razors found dropped on the baby slide in the park across the street. Mom's vitamins replaced by bits of dishwasher tablets. My parents are hesitant now, using last chances sparringly. They say his disorder makes him charming, makes it easy for him to fake normalcy. And to trick the doctors who care for him into thinking he is ready for rehabilitation. That I will just have to put up with my boredom if it means staying safe from him. I hate it when Charlie has to go away. It makes me have to pretend to be good until he is back. He awoke to the huge insect-like creatures looming over his bed and screamed his lungs out. They hastily left the room and he stayed up all night, shaking and wondering if it had been a dream. The next morning, there was a tap on the door. Gathering his courage, he opened it to see one of them gently place a plate filled with fried breakfast on the floor, then retreat to a safe distance. Bewildered, he accepted the gift. The creatures chittered excitedly. This happened every day for weeks. At first, he was worried they were fattening him up, but after a particularly greasy breakfast left him clutching, his chest from heartburn. They were replaced with fresh fruit as well as cooking. They poured hot steamy baths for him and even tucked him in when he went to bed. It was bizarre. One night, he awoke to gunshots and screaming. He raced downstairs to find a decapitated burglar being devoured by the insects. He was sickened but disposed of the remains as best he could. He knew they had just been protecting him. One morning, the creatures wouldn't let him leave his room. 
He lay down, confused but trusting as they ushered him back into bed. Whatever their motives, they weren't going to hurt him. Hours later, a burning pain spread throughout his body. It felt like his stomach was filled with razor wire. The insects chittered as he spasmed and moaned. It was only when he felt a terrible squirming feeling beneath his skin that he realized the insects hadn't been protecting him. They had been protecting their young. If you enjoyed this and would like to hear more stories like these, please go to www.youtube.com slash the voice of nightmares. Don't forget to give my video a like, leave a comment, and subscribe for more content. Also, you can follow me now on social media sites such as Twitter, Mr. Creepypasta Amino, Creepypasta Amino, Creepypasta Wiki, and Instagram. Last but not least, all stories, art, and music are owned by their respective authors. Links are available in the description below.